Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Freestar Financial Credit Union Credit 101 webinar. Before we begin, I wanted to go through a few housekeeping items. This webinar will be recorded. You will be muted throughout the entire presentation and do not have to have your video turned on. Questions can be submitted through the chat feature and they will be addressed at the end as time allows. And please do not chat in your account number, social security number, or any other sensitive information. Thank you. My name is Bradley Powers. I'm a branch manager here at Freestar Financial Credit Union. My co-presenter is Crystal Dennis, and I'm going to hand it over to her to get our presentation started. Good morning. Thank you, Bradley. As Bradley mentioned, my name is Crystal Dennis, and I'm the Director of Retail Sales, Sales here at Freestar Financial Credit Union. And I want to thank each of you for taking the time today to join us for our Credit 101 seminar. I'll go into a little detail about exactly what we'll be covering today. Um, we get a lot of questions about credit here at the Credit Union, so some of these are our most frequently asked topics. Um, the first would be credit reports. What are credit reports? Credit score, what is my credit score? What factors into what, what score I would get or what score I would have? The cost of credit and also ways to improve your credit. So let's talk a little bit about credit reports. Most people are familiar with the three major credit bureaus to which all report the FICO credit score, which we'll be discussing a little bit in more detail later in the presentation. Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax are the three major credit bureaus that all most lenders, banks, and credit unions use when determining credit worthiness of a borrower. Now I'll turn it over to Bradley. He'll discuss a little more in detail what exactly is on a credit report. Thanks, Crystal. So what we have in front of us now is an example of a credit report that we would see here at the credit union for a borrower that has supplied for a consumer loan, such as an auto loan or a visa card. We're going to take a look at all of the different things that we are looking at when we look at a credit report. First off on every credit report is name and address information for the borrower. Social security number and date of birth. Employment information, including the company and the dates reported. A credit report summary. So as you'll see on the next slide, the credit report is quite lengthy, but the profile summary gives us all of the information in a summarized fashion. It lets us know what percentage of uh, revolving assets are available, how many inquiries there have been, how many derogatory accounts there are. It gives us all of that information right up front. It also contains your credit score. In this example, it's your FICO score. Continuing through the credit report, any public records such as bankruptcies, judgments, foreclosures are going to be listed on your credit report. All of the creditors or the companies and businesses that you owe money to are going to be listed on your credit report as well. The information we have about those particular debts are the type of loan. So in this example, AUT, that stands for auto. So this one is an auto loan. We get information about the loan term. So again, in this example, this is a 76 month auto loan. We get balance and payment information, including when the trade line was opened, when it was last reported, the beginning balance, the current balance, and what the monthly payment is. We get information on each trade line concerning the repayment history. So in this example, this account has been open for 20 months. 
as indicated by the 20 in parentheses. It's currently an open trade line. And the C's you see reporting there, those tell us that this account has been current ever since it was open. There's no missed payments or 30 day plus lates. Other things we may see there are a zero, which would indicate on a credit card that there was no balance on that card for that particular month. Or we may see ones, twos, or threes, which would indicate that that loan was either 30, 60, or 90 days past due. The last section is inquiries. So every time you run your credit at a hard pull, it's going to show up on your credit report. We're going to talk about this a little bit more in depth in the future. So now that we know what is on your credit report, let's talk about what is not on your credit report. Generally rent payments, utility, cell phone payments, land contracts, parking tickets, financial account balances will not be reported to your credit report. However, rent, utility, cell phones may be reported negatively if they go into collections. So who reviews your credit report? Many different companies or institutions you're looking to do business with would review your credit report. All financial institutions will be taking a look at your credit when you go to open a new account. Apartments or rentals will be looking at your credit. When you do applications, such as credit cards, they'll be pulling your credit. Many employers will pull your credit when you are applying for a new job. And then when you get when you get quotes on insurance, such as auto insurance or homeowners insurance, they're going to be taking a look at your credit as well. Some of the benefits of obtaining credit. Very simply, when you get credit, it's a win-win situation. So you, you win, you get to purchase the item that you wanted to purchase. And it's a win that you get to build credit as you repay. Now we're going to go much more in depth into this, but timely repayment of debt will affect you for years to come. Crystal is going to expand now a little bit deeper into our credit score. So this is one of the most common topics that we get or common questions that we get. What is my credit score and how does that affect? Um, is that a good score or is that a bad score? So let's look and get try and get some of those questions answered. So what is your credit score? A credit score is a number that represents the likelihood that you'll pay your bills on time. It's basically a study of your past behaviors or your credit worthiness. The credit score also answers questions such as how likely are you to repay a loan? Lenders look at these scores to say in the past, if this borrower has taken out a loan, have they repaid it? Have they defaulted on it? Um, a credit score also predicts the likelihood of a 90 day delinquency over the next 24 months. Again, past behaviors. In the past, when we look over this credit score, have they paid bills late in the past? Have they had any 30 day lates, 90 day lates? Um, oh, and will this happen if we were to give them this loan again or give them an additional loan? What is the credit score? It shows it can change over, over time depending on your payment history. So some uh, lenders uh, report to the credit bureau every month, some report every week, some report bi-weekly, some may even work report every day. That changes based, your credit score will change based on when your creditors report to each credit bureau. And the credit score, a credit history accompanies the score and tells the story. Again, it tells how you have handled your debt in the past. Have you paid your bills on time? Have you had a vehicle repossessed? Have you foreclosed? Or have you paid all of your 
credit cards on time in full, those all reflect how your what your credit score would report as. So when do you get your credit score? A credit score begins to calculate when you have at least one account open. Sometimes they'll be called trade lines. So as long as you've had one account or trade line open for six months or more, you will start to receive a credit score. There also must be an account that has been updated in the past six months. We found that there have been some borrowers who've had, who's had credit in the past and they've had credit in the past, but may not have used their credit in the last few years, they will not have a credit score reporting. So it is very important that when you do have a credit score, you maintain your credit score. I always um, suggest if you have one credit card and you don't want to continue to grow your debt, just use the credit card to purchase gas, and then you'll make sure that you'll have a, a a report, a credit or report to your credit bureau. So we've mentioned FICO scores, but there are several other credit scoring models that are used by other um, bureaus. So for example, FICO, we, we've discussed that Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax use FICO scores. There's also the Beacon score. There's also a Vantage score, which is probably one of the more popular scores because Credit Karma uses the Vantage score. And also through Freestar Financial's mobile app, we have My Credit Score, which is powered by Savvy Money, which is also a free monitoring service that we use to benefit our members to be able to monitor their credit and their credit score. Um, there's also an Auto Enhanced Credit Score. The auto enhanced credit score is usually used by auto dealers. Um, so these various credit scores can have uh, various uh, scores reporting. We found that some borrowers may come in with a credit karma score, which is a vantage score that may be higher or lower than the score that we would pull for a loan through the credit union. Because we use FICO and um, the vantage score for every credit bureau, all trade lines may not report to every single bureau, so the scores could fluctuate. And we'll go into a little more detail about that as well. So that's why sometimes when you go into a borrower after you've pulled your credit report through Car Credit Karma, the score may be a little different than what we would pull as a lender. So what is FICO? I know we hear that quite often. Um, as a borrower or as a lender, we speak of FICO. FICO is Fair Isaac Corporation. It was founded in 1956. It's the largest and best known of several credit companies when it comes to calculating credit scores. It was created by engineer William Fair and mathematician Earl Isaac. It is used by 90% of all lenders, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac mortgage lenders have been using FICO scores since 1995. So we hear about um, the question I hear often when giving a member their credit score is, is that good? Is that a good score? Well, let's look at how credit scores are tiered in the United States. For example, a credit score range can go from 300 up to 850. In 2019, the average FICO score was at an all time high in at 706. So here are some of the credit score tiers where they can be rated from A to E. A being excellent credit with scores of 700 and above. The percentage of the population based in 2019 with these scores was 58%. So 58% of borrowers in the United States had the credit score of 700 or above. Then we would go to B credit with the score of 6, 660 to 699 with 15% of borrowers falling into this credit tier. Then C credit 620 to 659 at 12%, D 8% and E at below 549 at 7%. So these are the tiers that most, bar most lenders look at when um, deciding which rate you'll get and 
how um, credit worthy you are to borrow. And I'll turn it over to Bradley, who will go into something I mentioned about um, how the credit scores can have differences. Thanks, Crystal. Yeah, like, like you were saying, this is one of the main questions that we get when we're talking with our borrowers about their credit score that we pull is, well, I've got the Credit Karma app here. It says that I'm a 700, but you guys pulled it and it says a 678. What's going on with that? Well, there's a variety of different things and factors that go into that. Number one, all of these three companies calculate their credit scores a little bit differently. They weigh the debts a little bit differently. They look at risk a little differently. So you're going to see a, a difference in your credit score across the different bureaus because they're looking at those factors a little bit differently. A uh, second reason could be it's entirely possible that you have an account that is reporting to only one credit bureau and not all three. So if we take a look at the borrower Alyssa on the top there, she may have an account that's reporting to Experian that she's had perfect repay on. So that's helping to boost her credit score, but it may not be reporting to TransUnion and Equifax. Uh, another reason would be when you're pulling your score through Credit Karma, it's not doing a hard hit on your credit. So it's pulling information that is generalized and it's not the very specifics um, account history balances, repayment history that you're going to get when you do a hard pull through a lender. The mobile apps um, such as Credit Karma or the My Credit Score powered by Savvy Money, those are very, very good tools to use to let you know if you're headed on the right direction with your credit, but it's definitely not a hard pull credit score. So use those apps to help you monitor on a regular basis what your credit is. Uh, use the tips that those apps include to help you build your credit score. And then when you're ready to do an application um, at your lender, um, you will have worked on your credit and built it up. So now that we know what's on a credit report, let's take a look at some factors that weigh on your credit score. So 40% of your credit score is based on the most recent 12 months of activity. So let's think about that. So a credit score is a determination if you're going to repay your bills. So if you missed a payment, if you were 30 days or more late on one of your payments, that's going to look risky to the credit companies and they're going to weigh your score down because of that event. As time goes on, if you've continued to make your payments on time and you haven't missed any future payments, that event is not going to be as risky because you're rebuilding your history with the credit bureau. And that's going to look less risky as time goes on. So really important that if you did have an event like that you focus on getting back on track you focus on getting um, your payment history built back up and then as time goes on slowly that event is not going to have as much of an impact on your score the most recent three years or 36 months of activity has a 90 percent impact on your overall score Several components of your credit score. The largest component is worth 35%. That equals payment history. Very simply, do you pay your bills on time? Again, when, when credit bureaus are looking at your score and trying to determine risk and if you're going to repay your bills or not, they're going to look at what your payment history looks like and they're going to weigh that the heaviest. The next amount worth 30% is called capacity. It's basically the amount that you owe to creditors. Do you owe a lot of money to a lot of different companies? Now we're gonna go more in depth on this one in the next slide. 
15% of your FICO score is your length of credit history. How established is your credit history? So somebody who is 20 years old and only has a year or potentially two years of credit history is going to be weighed lower in that category than somebody who's more experienced uh, and older, just simply because, again, the credit bureaus are trying to determine if you're going to repay your bills or not. And the length of your credit history is basically writing the story for the credit bureau. 10% of your FICO score is new credit. Are you consistently pulling your credit at a bunch of different places? Are you increasing your debt obligations? Have you gotten you know, six new credit cards within the last month and a half? All of that factors into how risky the credit bureau uh, determines that. And the remaining 10% is the type of credit in use. A good rule of thumb is to have a healthy mix, both secured, such as an auto loan or a mortgage, and unsecured loans, such as a credit card. It's a really good idea to have both of those, and that looks positive to the credit bureaus. So let's take a deeper dive into capacity. This is, again, is worth 30% of what your credit score is. So let's look at this revolving credit example. So in the before scenario, this borrower is contemplating if they're going to close two of their credit cards. So right now they have four credit cards open. They have a total of $10,000 in credit limits and they have $2,500 in balances that are charged to those cards. So what we say is they have 75% available capacity. That means they have the ability to borrow $7,500 more before they would hit the maximum limit on their card. So they're 25% utilized, they have 75% available. So let's say they did close two cards that didn't have balances on it. So in the after scenario, now they just have two credit cards. They have only $2,500 in limits and they have $2,500 in balances. Well, now they don't have any available capacity. That $7,500 that they could utilize, they closed those cards, so now they have no capacity available. They're 100% utilized or they're maxed out on their credit cards. So generally, the, the higher the available capacity, the higher the credit score. So in this example, we would expect a, an actual decline in this borrower's credit score after they've closed those two cards. As a rule of thumb, you'll lose or gain about one point for every percent that you use up or pay down on revolving lines of credit. So in this example here, they went from 75% available capacity to 0% available capacity. So it's entirely possible that this borrower's credit score changed in the neighborhood of 75 points. Okay, so now I'll go into a little more detail about the cost of credit, the benefits of having a good credit score versus and, be, and being in a high, one of the higher credit tiers as opposed to being in the lower credit tiers. So we'll go through a couple examples um, just to give you an idea of, again, if you're in the excellent range versus the damaged range. So excellent score, let's talk about how would you have an excellent score? So excellent score will be comprised of that you're paying your bills on time, as you have a great mix of credit, so some secured or installment loans, such as a mortgage, auto loan, as well as a, some unsecured debt, which could be a personal loan and credit cards. So 
paying those on time, no judgments, no bankruptcy, no recent bankruptcy, those could give you excellent credit scores. Mildly damaged, so you may have had a few 30 day lates, um, but you have recovered, meaning you have, you may have had a 30 day late in January, but you've continued to manage to pay that bill on time for the next 12 months. Um, you may have a small collection on there and you may have paid it off, um, but those items are still showing on your credit report and depending on when your credit is pulled, it still may be affecting your score mildly. Damage score um, in these borrowers, we may see um, a bankruptcy, a foreclosure. We may also see um, some repossessions. We may see multiple late pays or um, slow late payments, um, some small collections and things like that. So as you can see from this example, the rate can vary. Uh, there can be a huge variation in the rate based on which credit tier you fall into. So let's go into an auto loan example. Um, an auto loan, we're looking to, the borrower is looking to borrow $30,000 um, at a, pay, a term of 72 months, so over the term of six years. So let's look at the excellent credit borrower. Um, they would qualify for a great rate at 2.99 with their payment of $456. Um, so the cost of them having bad credit would be zero. So what we're going to do is compare the other two borrowers with, against the excellent borrower to see um, the difference in their payments and the difference in their rate. So we have the mildly damaged credit uh, credit person who has a rate of 6.99. Um, their payment would go up slightly at $511. But what the major thing is, the cost of them having a, a credit score um, that falls into the mildly damaged range would cost them about $4,007 more over the term of the loan as opposed to the excellent borrower. And let's look at the damage score. The damage rate would be um, about 14.99. So as you can see, double what the mildly damaged rate would be and their payment would go up quite significantly at $634. But the wow for this would be the cost of that auto loan and having that score over the six years, $12,853 is what the borrower would pay um, in interest over that term. So what we always try to um, assist the borrower with is, yes, some borrowers may come in with a lower credit score and may have to take that interest rate of the 14.99 to get the vehicle that they would need to get to get to work or um, to, to get to work or to get just for them to be able to um, go through life. But what we suggest is after X paying that bill on time, your credit score will improve. We also will work with the borrower to see what else could possibly be on their credit report that could be affecting that score. So hopefully after six to 12 months that they are able to refinance, get a lower rate and cut off, cut down their payment as well as the amount of interest that they'll be paying. So in this example, going from an excellent score to a mildly damaged score, your payment, your monthly payment would increase about $55. And then when we look at the high, the damaged credit score, um, the payment would increase about $178 per month. So it is very important and very significant how your credit score will impact your financial, impact you financially over the long run. Let's take another look at another example, um, buying a home, a home loan. Right now, homes are selling fast and interest rates are really, really low. So let's see how the credit score will impact a home purchase for a very these same three borrowers. So right now, if you fall into that excellent tier, your rate could be about 3.25% and your monthly payment $653 over 30 years. So that's at the $150 mortgage. 
cost of bad credit, zero. So we're going to compare the other two borrower, borrowers with the, our excellent credit example. The mildly damaged credit score, 4% interest rate, not too much higher. Payment, $716, not too much higher. But when you look at the cost over the term of the loan, you would be paying $22,793 more for your, um, if your credit score were to fall into the mildly damaged category over the term of the 30 years. A damage score with the rate of five and a half percent payment, $852, would be paying, look at that, $71,595 more on their loan than a person with an excellent credit score. Not only in the long run is that affecting the borrower, but in the short term, monthly, $63 more if you score your credit is mildly damaged, and two, almost $200 more per month you'd be paying on a mortgage payment, exact same house, exact same term, just based on your credit score and your past, which is what you receive based on your past payment behaviors. So the next question is, how long do items stay on your credit report? So Bradley had mentioned it um, earlier as well about how you can recover from having um, late payments and things like that. But let's see how long these will show on your credit report. So late payments, collections, foreclosures, and short sales all can stay on your credit report for up to seven years. Um, from the date of filing or from the date of the sale date. Your bankruptcies, Chapter 7 and Chapter 13, up to 10 years, they'll show on your credit report, and judgments can last up to 12 years. Now, although these show on your credit report and does show borrowers your previous payment history, um, they you are able to recover from that. Many people have many things that happen in their lives that may cause them to fall into times where they may have to have a late payment on an item or may have lost their home. Um, but you are able to recover from that. Again, Bradley mentioned the last three, 36 months are, um, is 90% of how your credit score is impacted. Let's go into how many points you can lose for these. So bankruptcy. Credit score, if, you hit a bank, if a bankruptcy hits your credit report, you can lose up to 250 points on your credit, rescore, credit score. Foreclosures, up to 150 points. These are both major impacts on your credit score. Short sales, up to 80 points. Collections, between 75 and 100 points. So it may be a small medical bill that may show up for $100 but the impact that it has on your credit report can be huge. Repossessions, up to 100 points. Deed in lieu of foreclosure, returning the deed to the um, lender instead of foreclosure. Foreclosure on the property, up to 80 points. Current delinquencies, up to 60 points and inquiries. We get this question quite a bit. When you pull my credit, how it'll, it'll drop my score? It could, up to five points for every inquiry, but that does not impact overall in the long run your credit score as people think it does, especially when you're shopping around for a better rate for an, the exact same item, a home, a vehicle. And I'll go into that on the next slide. How long does it take you to recover? So bankruptcies, foreclosures, short sales, and civil judgments. Yes, these will appear on your credit report for up to seven or 10 years or up, up to 12 years with judgments, but you can recover from those. So your score will re start to rebound after, over, after three years of these filings on your credit report. Um, current delinquencies. Again, we mentioned you may run into a, a time where you made a late payment or were behind two months on a payment. They, those will affect your score six, after 60 to 90 days of good repayment, your score will start to rebound, um, rebound from those delinquencies. Credit inquiry, 60 days. So again, I mentioned when you are out shopping for a vehicle and you may go to various car dealerships 
and have your credit pulled. Those credit inquiries are usually lumped into one because one, you are looking to purchase the same item and those are treated as one inquiry. So the impact on your score, although you may see the impact right away, after about 60 days, it really would not affect your score as um, it did initially. All right, so I'm going to turn it back over to Bradley, who's going to help discuss how do we improve credit? So far, we've learned what a credit report looks like, what items report to a credit report. We've run through some costs and examples of um, what bad credit versus excellent credit looks like. And to wrap it all up, I want to give you some tips here on how to improve your credit. Now we meet with many, many different borrowers in a lot of different life situations. And let's be honest, sometimes life just happens. You may unexpectedly lose a job. You may fall ill and have to be in the hospital for several weeks. Life happens. So a bad credit score it might be something that you had no control over, but it doesn't have to define you. We here at the credit union, it's one of the things we do with all of our members is offer free credit reviews. Where we'll sit down with you, we'll make a plan based on your specific situation on how we can help you recover out of those. So um, don't be disheartened if you're in that situation. Um, because it's not something that needs to define you for the rest of your life. So a couple of tips here to build new credit. Open a savings and checking account at a credit union or a bank to start a relationship. That's an essential step to building new credit, establishing that relationship with that financial institution and those professionals will help you on the road to building new credit. Put utility bills such as DTE in your name, pay them on time. Apply for a gas card and pay it off monthly. It's something that most of us need is a gas credit card. And if you're paying it off monthly, you're not only being responsible, but you're also continuing to build that payment history like we had talked about earlier. And then get a second loan from a credit union or a bank. So we talked about your mix of credit. So a gas card would be considered an unsecured credit card. A second loan, you could get a secured loan such as an auto loan um, from your credit union or bank, and then you could start to have a healthy mix of credit. A couple tips to improve your FICO score. Very most important tip is ensure your credit bureau data is accurate. It seems like every time we turn on the news, there's been another breach or another hack, and our information just seems to be going out onto the web and through a bunch of these different events. The Federal Trade Commission um, presented a report to Congress back in 2012, and remember this is prior to some of these very large hacks like the Equifax, the Capital One hack. But back in 2012, the Federal Trade Commission presented this report to Congress. And what they found is 26% of the participants in the study had at least one error on their credit report. So that was one out of four people in this study had an error on their credit report. It could have been a minor error, it could have been a major error, but one out of four people had an error. So ensuring your credit bureau data is accurate is going to be the number one thing you can do to improve your FICO score. And in a couple of slides, Crystal is going to give you some information on how you can do that. Focus on bringing your delinquent loan accounts current. So when things report to your credit as being past due, they'll continue to be in a past due status until you can bring them back up to being current. If that loan is showing as delinquent, it's going to continue to hold down your credit score 
as long as it's in a delinquent status. I know, especially with the times that we live in, with the um, pandemic and things of that nature, a lot of lenders have different programs where they can work with borrowers on helping to bring uh, loan accounts current and making sure that people can get back on track. Comparison shop. So Crystal had mentioned this. It's smart to comparison shop. You want to check for a huge purchase such as a, a home purchase or a refinance mortgage. You're going to be looking at a couple of different lenders to make sure that you're getting the best deal. If you're doing those credit inquiries within a 30 day period of time, the credit bureau understands that you're comparison shopping and they're going to basically lump those inquiries together as one. Now, a mortgage inquiry is not going to be lumped together with an auto loan or a credit card inquiry, so it has to be an application for the same type of product for it to be for the impact to be minimized like that. And then the fourth one here, pay down the credit cards first that are near their limits. So we talked about this on the capacity slide. The more that you have available to use of your credit limits, the better off your score is going to be. So getting those credit cards paid down that are near their limits is going to reflect positively. It's not going to look as if it's as risky because you can't borrow anything. If there was something to come up in your life, you wouldn't have accessibility to that credit card because it's already maxed out. Continuing on that mind track, continue to pay down your total revolving balances, but don't close out that account. And again, this goes back to that capacity slide. The old way of thinking was, well, when you pay down a credit card to zero, you want to close it out because it looks, it looks risky to lenders that you could all of a sudden borrow the full limit on that credit card. But over the past five to 10 years or so, that thinking has shifted you have payment history with those accounts. Um, credit, you know, the credit bureaus can see that, you know, you've you've paid them down. You have that history continuing to report to to your credit bureau. So make sure you keep those accounts open. If you're scared that you know you you pay it down, but you're worried about possibly recharging that card back up, you know, if you don't feel like you could, you have that control quite yet. Uh, one thing that I would suggest is you take your credit cards, you put them in a Tupperware container with some water in it, and you toss it in the freezer. Uh, that way you can't quickly get to your credit card that you would need, let's say. You can't quickly get to it because it's frozen in the freezer in some water. So if you're concerned about charging it up, that's a little tip that you could use that might work for you. And then you could also consider consolidating those credit card balances into a fixed installment loan. Fixed installment loans are going to have uh, an end term, such as uh, 48 months or 60 months. They're going to have a consistent payment, and they're going to help you to get out of those high interest revolving credit cards. And it, it'll basically give you a light at the end of the tunnel. And then again, you want to minimize applications for new credit. Crystal mentioned this. It can possibly ding your credit score for up to five points each time you run your credit. So if you're comparison shopping, that's a good thing to do. Make sure you do it within 30 days. But if you're, if you're applying for other new credit, you want to keep those applications to a minimum. Generally, you want to do two applications for credit over a 12 month period is the general rule of thumb. All right, so Bradley mentioned um, monitoring your credit bureau and monitoring your credit report. So it's very important that you um, double check and make sure everything is accurate on your credit report. Um, a few ways that we, we I would suggest is um, through annualcreditreport.com. 
you are able to get one free credit report from each bureau annually. So one suggestion is, hey, set a reminder um, in January to reach out to each of these credit bureaus um, to get your a copy of each of those credit reports, just to make sure that everything that is on there is accurate and a true uh, representation of your borrowing and payment um, payment history. Another idea is, I know we hear all the time about Credit Karma and other Vantage score bureaus such as um, through Freestar Financial's mobile app, we have the My Credit Score powered by Savvy Money, which is you're able to actually monitor your credit score daily and view your full credit report. So it'll show every day you, without being a hard inquiry what your credit score is. It'll also show you what's on your report and it'll also show you if you pay down um, if you increase your capacity or decrease your capacity, it'll also show you if you paid off any loans or credit cards. Um, so those are very important, making sure that your credit report is accurate by using some of these tools will help ensure that you have an uh, accurate reflection of your borrowing, borrowing habits. So in summary, today we discuss a lot of things, um, knowing how your knowing what your credit score is and how you maintain it and how to manage it. So it's very important again to monitor your credit. It's very important to work towards being in that higher tier because over the long run, it could cost you a lot more money when you're looking to make any types of purchases. Um, also, a big portion of your credit score is based on your repayment habits. So, for example, it's very important to do what? Pay your bills on time. Paying your bills on time will increase your credit score. It will maintain your credit score and it will get you to that higher tier um, as a borrower. Failure to repay your debts will report it result in a poor credit score and will cost you more, more money. The two examples that we reviewed, um, the auto loan purchase and the home loan purchase, the credit score, I'm sorry, the credit score really impacted the rates that these borrowers received, which in turn impacted the amount of interest that they would pay over the life, life of the loan. And finally, reviewing your credit report regularly. That annual free annual credit report that you can receive from each bureau through annualreport.com or using another um, credit monitoring service such as Credit Karma or My Credit Score through Savvy Money through our uh, through Freestar Financial's mobile app. Making sure that what's on there is actually your debts, what's showing as your payment is actually your payment history. So we are going to go ahead and open up our chat for any questions. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the chat. We will have someone monitoring those. But if, in the meantime, if you have any questions that you haven't thought that you think of after our um, webinar has ended, you can email our marketing department and we'll get those answered for you. Our marketing email is marketing at freestarfinancial.com. So I'll turn it over to our marketing department to see if we have any questions available in the chat. Crystal and Bradley, I do, do not see any questions right now um, in the chat or during the presentation. Okay. Okay, so let's give it maybe a minute or so. If there's any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the chat. If not, you can go ahead and email our marketing department if anything comes up afterward, afterwards. Also, Bradley and I are available um, to meet with anyone who's interested. So you can, and at any, any of the managers at any of the offices are available also for a free credit review where we can pull your credit for you review it with you to see what tier you're in now and what we can do to help you get to a higher tier. I do see one question that is in the chat. 
um, if one of you would like to answer it. It's, I had a credit card charge me for something and it took six months for them to remove it, but my rating was lowered by 50 points. I can't hear the question. Let me see again. Did you want me to repeat it, Crystal, yes, for you? Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> this was from um, Sue, and she her question was she had a credit card charge, um, her something, and it took six months for them to remove it, but her rating was lowered by 50 points. Okay. So it looks like there was maybe some fraud on her credit card. Mm -hmm. So one thing I do always suggest to a borrower is to go back to that lender. So if you go back to the lender and let them know that your credit score was impacted and they in, in the end they did remove the charge, you can let them know that your credit score was impacted and they can accurately re report um, how they can correct how that score was reported over those six months. So if there was a dispute going on between you and the um, if the between you and the lender and they meet and then they uh, corrected it, you can go back to the lender. They can fix it that way. And you can also dispute inaccurate reporting through the credit bureaus as well. Each credit bureau has dis dispute forms. Sometimes it can be done right through their website. And what you one of the options is to dis dispute um, late payments. So you can I would first go back to the lender and discuss with the lender the situation um, to see if they can correct it that way. And then if you get no resolution, then I would also dispute it through the credit bureau. Okay, she did respond that they said it was my responsibility to have the credit bureaus to correct. I could not get through to any of them. I even wrote to them. Is there any suggestions that you might have to help her? Um, again, well, it looks like you, if you did, you probably won't be able to speak with anyone directly. Um, in my experience, I did have more success um, through the online feature. So I'm not sure if this is how you did it, but disputing it through online. Um, and usually they had re would respond directly to your email. So that would be my suggestion. Bradley, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I I agree with that, Crystal. I've had um, things on my credit report that were inaccurate. And when I pulled my credit report at the www.annualcreditreport.com, there is a dispute feature right on that website. I submitted a dispute through the website and as Crystal said they communicated with me via email. I provided them some documentation from the lender saying that it was their error and they were able to get those corrections done for me I believe in somewhere between 30 and 45 days from when I first contacted them. I hope that answers her question. Um, let's see, the reply was nothing from them because the credit store, the credit card where she looks like used her um, card, the store, the company said it sent it to collections. Okay, so what I would do is if that, uh, if that participant could email marketing at freestartfinancial.com and we could reach out to her individually, Bradley or I, just to see if there is anything that we can do um, on our end. Maybe we can pull her, and pull her credit or if she can bring us in just so we can look and see exactly her individual situation. That sounds like a great idea. Sue, if you could reach out, um, go ahead and email marketing at freestarfinancial.com and we'll make sure that um, we can help you out and take care of this for you. There also is another question by Maurice. Um, he would like to know if it would hurt his credit to close out his Christmas loan or the signature loan early. So 
generally what I would say for that, Maurice, and that's a great question. We get asked that a lot as well. Um, remember back to our components of a credit score slide where 35% of your credit score is going to be based on your payment history. Um, so it it is a good idea as long as you've established payment history, uh, you could pay it off early. But let's take the example of, you know, it was a 24 month uh, signature loan, let's say, and you paid it off after three months. Well, that in that specific case, it's not going to do anything to help your credit score because you haven't built that consistent payment history over time. But if you've made, you know, more than half of the payments on time to that loan, uh, minimum of six months, then that would establish that payment history uh, and build that portion. So I think you would be able to to close those out early as long as it's not very near when you first got the loan. Okay, it looks like that question was answered. Thank you, Bradley. I do not see any more questions in the chat. We've got a couple more minutes here if anybody has additional questions please go ahead and submit them in the chat uh, or you could email questions directly to marketing at freestarfinancial.com i'll give us a couple more minutes here Well, while we're waiting to see if any more qu questions do come up, I do just want to take the time to thank everyone for their time today. Um, and I do hope that you can pass this information along or reach out to either one of us and we'll try and work with you to see if there's anything we could do to either help you save some money on some interest or help you build your credit. So. OK, we did get a question about if the seminar will be recorded and sent to our email. Yes, we will have the recording also available on our website. So it looks like it. Yeah, it looks like they're asking. Um, we will send a link out for everybody um, in the in that registered in your email. So you'll be able to click on the link and that'll direct you to the recording of today's presentation. Do you have another question from Leanne? How do you keep a paid paid item such such as a loan on your credit report once you paid it off. Oh, a paid off item, such as a loan on your credit report. So usually we when we pull credit, we do see items that have been paid off. So although it may not be reporting or it may not have an impact on your score, usually any loans that you have paid off are reporting to the credit bureau. Um, I'm not sure of, and I've seen this for loans that have been paid off over the last 15, 15 years or more, because they that does reflect, uh, give a lender an idea of your payment history. It does show if you've had auto loans that were paid off or, um, and, or things like that. I've seen where those are still showing on the credit report as a paid off item. So I'm not sure if that answers your question, but um, I do see we we when we pull credit, we do see items that have been have been paid off, installment loans that have been paid off.
Thank you, Crystal. It looks like that question was answered. Um, it looks like someone is trying to type another question. Okay, the question is, how long does the paid in full account stay on your credit before they take it off? I don't want to give any wrong information, but what I can say is from what I've seen, I've seen items on your credit report um, it, that loans that have been paid off for 15 years or more. So just based on the credit bureaus that I've pulled, um, I do still see those showing up on credit reports. So I don't know the exact time frame, um, it, years wise, um, that may be something. If you were to email that question to our marketing at freestarfinancial.com, I definitely will look into that for you and get that information out to you. But again, when I've pulled credit reports, I do see loans that have been paid off and good loans that have been paid off and they are still showing even after 10 years or more, 10 or 15 years or more. But if you could please email that um, just because I don't want to give any inaccurate information to you. So email that question to marketing at freestarfinancial.com and I'll definitely look into that just for the sake of time in more detail for you. Okay, thank you, Crystal. Mm -hmm. Leanne, if you could just go ahead and email marketing at freestarfinancial.com, we'll make sure that we get that question taken care of for you. Well, I wanted to thank everybody for your time today. Thank you for attending our Credit 101 webinar presented by Freestar Financial Credit Union. Uh, it was crystal and my pleasure to present this information for you. Please keep an eye out on our social media uh, and your email as this is really the beginning of a series of webinars that we're going to be having coming in the future. Uh, so we our goal is to increase uh, your financial knowledge in a lot of different areas. So please do keep an eye on our social media and your email for more events in the future. I'd like to say thank you to you all. I hope you have a very happy and safe Monday.